Welcome back. So now that we've got the basic barrel in place, the thing that we're going to be focusing on doing is creating some sort of painting that we can do in the world. We're going to make it sometimes look like it's clean and we're going to make it sometimes look like it's old and busted. So to do that, what we need to do is again, open up the material. And if I look at this, I can see that we've got the normal map. We've got this section here, which is the actual diffuse texture. And then we've got the metallic properties and the roughness properties. Now there are a few different ways we could go about doing this. I'm going to demonstrate material functions in a different tutorial. Uh, but in this case, what we're going to be doing is I'm simply going to be lerping according to vertex data. So to do that, go up to here and grab vertex color. Here we go. Now vertex color allows us to paint onto a mesh uh, various vertex data on red channel, green channel, blue channel, and an alpha channel, which is really, really useful. Now in this case, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using the alpha channel vertex data to blend between two different textures. So if I get this, I'm gonna now go back to my content browser and I'm gonna grab the clean version of the Gradle Barrel Lover. I'm gonna go into here, I'm gonna hit T, and you can see that we've got that up. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna hold down L to add a linear interpolate or a loop. Another way to do it is to go up here and tap in the word linear and you'll see a linear interpolate. Now once that's done, all I have to do is start connecting these up. Uh, actually, I'm gonna rearrange these because I want my vertex data to go that way. Now, what I'm gonna do is the this connects to A this connects to B. The alpha channel of vertex data is going to be the alpha data. And if I go to here and connect this to base color, what we've essentially done is it says that when alpha channel is zero, it'll be one texture. When alpha data is one, it'll be the other texture. So it creates us a nice easy way to blend. Now for all those keeping track at home, you'll notice that we're gonna actually have to do this on a few channels. We're gonna to need to do it on the diffuse, but we're also gonna to need to do it on the specular. So I'm gonna hit Control W, and this time I'm gonna get the alpha data of A, alpha data of B, and this alpha data is again controlled by the vertex weighting. I'm gonna connect that up. So now we have a clean and a dirty alpha channel being read in. And the final part that I really care about is doing that same thing again, but this time I'm gonna want to do it for roughness. So to do it on roughness, I simply do a lerp again. Uh, this time what we're actually gonna do is, I think when the, when the um, barrel is new and shiny, the roughness value I'm gonna want to be at about 0.4 but when it's you know old and busted, we're gonna to go to about where we had it before with, uh, with 0 0.9. So 0 0.4 is going in the A channel, 0 0.9 in the B channel. This is connecting to roughness and alpha connects back to here. So now we have a very simple network. Metallic, I'm gonna keep the same across the board. And all I have to do is hit save. And if I look at my barrel, here he is. Looks like it did before, except this time, if I click on the barrel, what I'm going to do is, if, under paint color, I'm gonna set it to be the alpha channel. See over here, it says channels alpha. If I click on it, now I hit control, click, it's nothing happens, but if I hit control shift click, which erases, you can now see that I'm able to get this barrel and paint in new and shiny look to it all. And here we have working vertex data. So hopefully you got something from that part. Um, one other thing that's probably worth showing you as well is, and this is just, again, the tip of the iceberg, is if I open up the content browser again, and this time I go to barrel shader two again, we load it up. One other really nifty little function I can do is if I was to get this data here and do a blend overlay. So I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna add the blend overlay. This is gonna connect just before the base color. 
Let me drag this this way a bit. So the blend overlay goes here. We're going to connect this to base, this to the um, to the main output of vertex color, and then I'm going to push this into basic color as a result. I'm going to tick it, and this is again a really useful little whoa. And this is again a very useful little function because what I can do is with that in play, I can now hit save, go back to barrel of tutorials. And here's my barrel, but watch happens this time. If I was to get red data, um, sorry, if I was to check red, I'm now actually able to remove or add red data to it. So I can make this barrel now the blue barrel version, or I can make it look like it's been stained of some descript there. If I go red, green, and blue, I can now collectively add it to it, darken elements of it. And you could use this for all sorts of uh, things. Like if you wanted to, you could blend the red channel using one texture, the green channel using another, blue using another, and alpha using another to paint in rust, to paint in mold, mildew, that kind of things, or uh, even like a leak on it. It's really obviously it happens on an asset by asset basis, but it can be a really, really powerful thing. So I do strongly recommend you, uh, you mess around with it a little bit if you're looking at getting involved with the shaders in Unreal Engine 4. Otherwise, uh, good luck with the rest of it and let us know if you have any issues. And please, please, please uh, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and don't forget to subscribe because, you know, warm and fuzzy feelings. Thanks guys. Bye.